This information is not supposed to be given to you. Because it breaks the control of the powers that be, on the masses. What if I told you, that there is a creation story, the origin of mankind, that predates the Abrahamic religions? Not by a few thousand years, but tens of thousands of years. And the Bible, New Testament and Old Testament, as well as Quran contain this creation story, in their own unique way. But the creation story that I am about to share with you, breaks the existing paradigm. That is why you are not supposed to know it. Adam, as we know him to be, was not the first human. To understand that, we have to go into the depths of the history of human civilization and find out where it all began. In the book, The Twelfth Planet, by Zechariah Sitchin, a story is told that is paradigm-shattering to say the least. There is a twelfth planet according to Sitchin, that is called Nibiru. It is orbiting a brown dwarf star. This is now accepted by science to be a fact. That there is a brown dwarf currently in orbit to our sun. And this star is being orbited by the twelfth planet, Nibiru, as Sitchin puts it. Well, what does it have to do with us? For that, we have to dive deep into one of the oldest, if not the oldest creation stories found on Earth. The Sumerian Tablets. I would not have given the Sumerian Tablets much weight, but there are some scientific facts now admitted by science that give great credibility to the creation story told in the Sumerian Tablets. You might have heard the word Anunnaki before. It is a word used in Sumerian Tablets to describe aliens, to put it simply. It means, people from heavens, or those who came from above, or the gods from heavens. The translations differ in structure and wording, but do not differ in meaning or what they imply. Anunnaki's are beings, who came to earth from heavens. And in the old days, heavens was just a word used for space. Now, Sitchin talks about these beings extensively in the book The Twelfth Planet. And I will talk about them in a separate video in depth. But here the focus is on this ancient creation story of the Sumerian tablets, in which these Anunnakis have played the role of gods. I have used the word gods with lowercase g. Because these beings have been mistaken by many to be the gods of planet Earth. They are not. These beings came down on Earth for a purpose. That purpose is speculated by many in different ways. But it is clear from the Sumerian tablets that they were here to mine some materials. And it was a labor of extreme intensity and was taking them very long time. But the brunt of it was taken by the working class of these Anunnaki beings called Ajiji. Yup, working class. Funny how this concept is still being played out on planet Earth to this day. Anyways, the Ajiji had been going hard at labor for long time, and finally had enough. They rebelled against the ruling class, the pantheon of the Anunnaki so-called gods, and demanded to be assisted in one way or another. This is where the creation story of mankind as we know it begins. The head of this Anunnaki pantheon is King Anu, the supreme leader of these beings. And he has two sons, Enlil and Enki, who were present on planet Earth, while Anu ruled from heavens. His sons Enlil and Enki decided to play with the existing humanoids of planet Earth with genetic modifications to create the Homo sapiens. Yes, existing humanoids. They didn't create us. That is why they are not our creators. They masqueraded as gods, but are beings of flesh and blood but their godliness is still being upheld to this day. I would not have paid much attention to this story, but the science now proves that our DNA has mutated or evolved unnaturally. As there is a huge evolutionary gap between the Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. Here is an excerpt from the book The Twelfth Planet by Zechariah Sitchin, for you to understand this abnormal evolutionary leap. The real puzzle, however, is not the backwardness of the Bushmen, but our advancement, for it is now recognized that in the normal course of evolution, man should still be typified by the Bushmen and not by us. It took man some two million years to advance in his tool industries from the use of stones, as he found them to the realization that he could chip and shape stones to better suit his purposes. Why not another two million years to learn the use of other materials, and another ten million years to master mathematics and engineering and astronomy? Yet here we are, less than 50,000 years from Neanderthal man, landing astronauts on the moon. The obvious question, then, is this. Did we and our Mediterranean ancestors really acquire this advanced civilization on our own? To put it simply, evolution cannot answer the almost out of nowhere appearance of the Homo sapiens, that is the so-called modern man. It would have taken us millions of years to have evolved from Homo erectus to Homo sapiens, by the painfully slow path of evolution. Look it up it is supported by modern science. And still a mystery to modern scientists as to how Homo sapiens showed up out of nowhere about 200,000 years ago. Almost out of thin air. 
as if someone created them in a lab. This is where it gets interesting. The Sumerian tablets also give accounts of this creation story to have happened some 200,000 years ago. And the records also refer to the Anunnaki beings arriving on Earth somewhere 450,000 years ago. Coincidence? I don't think so. This is the only story that explains the missing link between our so-called and flawed evolution theory. We didn't evolve. We got genetically tampered with in the Garden of Eden, that is the laboratory or controlled zone of ancient times. Yup, the Garden of Eden in Bible is derived from the Sumerian tablets Eden, predating it thousands of years. The Garden of Eden was a zone where they did genetic modifications to the existing humanoids to create an intelligent race who would do their mining for them. Thus, Adamu was created. By mixing the essence of the Anunnaki's with the existing humanoids to create Homo sapiens. This essence could just be their genetic material. Which explains why we have so much so-called junk DNA. Which is not junk, but deactivated DNA. And our chromosome too has been spliced and fused. That is not a natural phenomenon. Thus, these DNA anomalies in mankind give tremendous credibility to the creation story of the Sumerian tablets. And funny how the Garden of Eden produced the first thinking man, Adamu. Eerily similar to name Adam, from the mainstream scriptures of the modern world. As I started this video, I told you that you are not supposed to know this. Why? Because it makes you question the existing systems and religions of this world. Hence, breaking the control system from the majority of mankind. It shows us that we are not alone. The world government knows it well. Don't be fooled by their words. They know it. The mainstream scientists also know it full well. But they always deny it. So that you would not know. If you can rob mankind of their true origin, you can make them into whatever you want. There is too much information about these beings that I know of that will shatter the reality as you know of it. And it might seriously question your religious beliefs, so much so that you might lash out on me. So, I will slowly uncover all that. But if you read the mainstream scriptures in light of the Sumerian tablets which predates them for thousands of years, you will see the mainstream scriptures falling short to say the least. It is not my intention to upset anyone. My intention is to reveal those things that you are not supposed to know for some reason. And then you can base your own judgment upon what you find. Except for the Abrahamic religions, all indigenous and ancient people believe to have a link with the stars. They all have stories of brethren from the heavens. Yet, the mainstream media and scientists are almost hell-bent to deny that. Because they want to control your perception and suppress your consciousness. So that you do not realize that your own I amness is your salvation and your savior. Take what is said in this video as skeptically as you will, but do your research on it. And I have faith, you will come to the same conclusion. The reason I am not giving a lot of in-depth information is because I have to cover a few general topics about these beings to set you up for something. The powers that be are about to do something that might risk the future of mankind. Just to hint at it, you will begin to see UFO-related stuff a lot in the mainstream media. Because they are preparing us for a new type of control game. Because when mainstream media takes a narrative, know that they are about to build the masses up for something. And it is usually via fear-mongering. The goal is to suppress consciousness. Because free-thinking man is out of control, which is unacceptable for the system. Rising in consciousness is the only solution to break free from the system. Because you can see their game and choose not to play.